Welcome everyone, today we have 10 amazing new glitches in Super Mario Maker 2. Today we go over some very interesting standing humanoid wigglers. We have a very cool new power conveyor one-way clip. We cover an interesting front-facing big Koopa setup. And we play around with glitchy clear pipe shenanigans. Without further ado, let's dive in. This is an interesting little glitch that we find in the vertical subworld. See this pipe right here, it ends right at the grid line. If we take this pipe and we put it next to the edge of the screen like that, it will go flush to the edge of the screen, which looks pretty cool. If I take this green and I lift it up one tile, you're gonna notice that there's a half of a pipe that extends past the edge of the screen or where the edge of the screen was. This does not work horizontally, so in the overworld or a horizontal subworld, it does not work like this. Now, if I start the scene, this little half pipe will disappear. So it's more of a visual editor glitch than anything, but it's still an interesting little glitch. You may know this already. This cat Mario right here can scratch at a big bullet coming towards you and make it go to the right, which will destroy blocks and open up pathways. If you do that cat scratching at the right time, these blocks right here won't actually break right away. The bullet will clip through them and not break this first line and then start breaking the last three lines. This is a pretty interesting little bullet clipping these solid blocks glitch. So I'm just going to spam the scratch. And as you see, it clips through, only breaks the last three lines when it should break all of them. It's a pretty interesting little glitch. This is an interesting little glitch. This conveyor belt right here is going to push this launcher off into this slope right here on the right. At the same time, this muncher right here is going to get pushed off and over to the left. The muncher lifts this launcher up a little bit, pushing this muncher into this slope. When the muncher is inside of the slope, we can actually not get damaged with it if we walk on top of it. And I'll show you in a second. With Big Mush Mario, we can actually make contact with the muncher without taking damage. So, you see this little stutter that happens when I walk with the slope. That is me touching the muncher without taking damage. Which is pretty interesting, I'd say. Because it should make me take damage. Right now, I'm standing on top of the muncher. No damage being taken, which is pretty cool. Even more evidence that I'm actually standing on the muncher is... If we are in a boot, a big stiletto like this, we can ground pound and destroy munchers. I will be able to destroy this muncher from the top of this slope. So it's even more evidence that I am making contact with the muncher. So we're gonna go over here slowly to the point where we are on top of the muncher and then ground pound. And we can destroy that muncher. Here's an interesting little glitch. When we start the scene, these pal blocks are going to get pushed onto the ground by these conveyor belts. These wigglers will be standing on top of the pal blocks, and when we jump on them, something very funny happens. So I'm going to jump on this wiggler right here, and when I do, he extends his butt down and stays up with his head, which means he is a humanoid wiggler. He's standing on his feet right now, standing upright. Pretty cool, actually. His body does tend to hyper-vibrate as well, which is cool, too. Humanoid Wigglers. Oh, yeah. Here's an interesting little one-way clip. I'm going to hold duck and right as I fall down on this donut block. I'm going to start sliding on this conveyor belt, and something interesting is going to happen when this pal block drops on the conveyor belt. So I hold down, the donut drops me down, and now we are sliding on this conveyor belt. I'm just going to jump around a little bit, and if we do it correctly, the pal will hit the conveyor belt, which will push us through the one ways, allowing us to jump out of the claw and get through. Here's another one of those glitches that depends on something being on the specific tile, so it's one of those X equals things. One of these keys we can grab, and all of the rest we cannot. So I'll go down the line so I can show you. I cannot grab that one. I cannot grab that one. I can't grab this one or that one. But I can grab this one for some reason. It is on the eighth tile. This is an X equals eight. For some reason, we can grab this key, but none of the rest. Which is pretty damn interesting. Why would the game be designed like this, Nintendo? Why? 
It doesn't even make any sense. Nope. Here we have yet another Hyper Vibrate setup. We haven't done a Hyper Vibrate setup in quite some time because they all are pretty similar. This one's actually quite interesting though. It uses a sideways thwomp that's hitting a spring and it's struggling to hit the spring and stay away from this slope. Um, this launcher pushes the sideways thwomp because of this conveyor belt. All of this gets nutty. One of the cooler things about this is that this rocky wrench will be facing left, but for some reason the dry bones guy on top of them is forced to face right the entire time. And I haven't seen something like that before. Normally they face your direction because they're trying to throw stuff at you. Dry Bones dude right now is not going to face us though. He's going to face the other way. So it's pretty strange that Dry Bone guy is not facing us. But yes, indeed, another Hyper Vibrate setup. Here we have a very interesting situation where we can make it look like the Koopa is facing us, running at us, facing the camera, which is pretty damn cool. All we have to do is take his shell away from him, so I'm going to jump on the left side of him, which will pop him out to the right, and then I'm going to kick his shell away so that he does not have a shell anymore. We're going to force him to go onto this conveyor belt, and then we're going to go on a very specific point where he will not be facing left or right. So we pop him out like that. We get him to run to the right. Now he's running to the right the entire time. That's normal because of the conveyor belt, but I'm going to slowly go left. And hopefully we can get him aligned properly so that he's facing us. We just can't go too far. There we go. This one's pretty good. So currently he is facing us running forward. Running at us. This is really, really interesting. <laughs> really funny too. Here we have some glitchy clear pipe shenanigans. These springs are going to drop and hit this blooper and make him go into the clear pipe. He's going to do backflips in this pipe. He's going to appear for a very split second in between these pipes as he crosses that line. Check this out. That's pretty interesting. If there are two of these, same kind of thing happens but just two images. That looks pretty cool too. Now, if we put a cloud right there and a spring, they will both get stuck. So first let's do just one. It will get stuck there in between the two pipes, which is quite glitchy. It's quite funny looking too. If we put two, now we create some form of abomination in between this. It becomes a new animal altogether. <laughs> what have we done? Here we have a new launcher hyperspeed setup. This launcher is going to fall on this spring, and using these conveyor belts, it's going to push the launcher and the spring to the right very, very fast. There was a setup like this that we did in the past, a long time ago actually, but it was very inconsistent, and it was very slow compared to this setup right here. Also, there was a setup that worked, but it was only in 3D world. Now, as long as we stay on this conveyor belt, the camera is able to stay with us. So right here, we won't actually get screen crushed. It will push the screen much, much faster. We'll get crushed at the end because why not? This is the entire length of the level, by the way, as wide as it possibly gets. If we do a duck jump and go on top of the spring, however, as it slides to the right, we can actually get ourselves to get crushed by the screen. So I'm going to start this right here and then do some duck jumps to get on top of this spring. As long as we're on top of that spring, the camera doesn't stay with us, and so the screen crushes us. At about the halfway point? No, not even close to the halfway point. So yeah, this is a pretty interesting new hyperspeed setup. Let's do it one more time. Run away, Mario! Run away! <laughs> 